Yeah! Welcome to the podcast, Stop Crying Poser. Greatest podcast known to man as voted by James Buchanan, Andrew Johnson, Donald Trump, Franklin Pierce, William Henry Harrison, and Warren G. Harding. I typed in who are the worst presidents. <laughs> Shout out to Day Day, Bitcoin is Freedom, Late Bloomer, Keith Skates, Node for Droid, Day Day, Cam702, Kyle San, Gaijas, Evil One, Bury My Cock in Her, The Real Griff. I appreciate you guys for tuning in live right here on twitch.tv slash Ninja Lifestyle. We usually do this podcast every single Friday, right around 3.30 p.m. Pacific time. The time right now is 3.24 p.m. I'm starting a little bit early because uh, I got some work to do in the backyard. Plenty of fun stuff to talk about today because I left you guys on a cliffhanger last podcast because it was my birthday weekend. I did a podcast on Friday and let's try and tell the story chronologically. So the first plan of the birthday party is to go to the bar. I always go to the same bar. It's called Joker's Bar. If anyone out there wants to come find me and kill me, all you fake internet threat makers out there, I'm at Joker's Bar 89108 on Decatur and Vegas Drive. I am always there. All your little fake threats about threatening me, I'm there every single fucking Friday. Come and beat me up, you fucking losers. Anyways, my party's over there. I invited some of my friends, we show up, there's uh, there's people eating some food, um, we're all just hanging out, uh, I stay there kind of late, I'm playing some games of pool, I'm playing all my music that I like on the jukebox, everyone's being super nice to me. Um, it's my birthday, like last time we did a birthday party over there, there was like balloons and there was like these little streamers, but I guess the person, the bartender there that usually sort of takes joy in setting up birthday decorations. They were sick that day, so I got fucking Brady the bartender. Oh, yuck. Got Brady the bartender instead of uh, the party person. So we're over there hanging out. I'm in the booth. I got my friends showed up that I don't see that often. Rye Dog popped in. Ward popped in. Isaiah popped in. T, Tex. Uh, some people I haven't seen in a long time. Cam rolled through. Um, Manny came by the next day. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I don't want to leave any names out. Uh, White Boy Tone came over. A lot of people that I don't see too often, so it's nice to see all my friends. I see these guys for things like Thanksgiving or Christmas, 4th of July, but uh, other than that, it's kind of become like I only see these guys on holidays because everyone has kids and their jobs and their wives and their blah, 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 blah. So anyways, a couple people show up. Let me talk about the gifts because I, got, I had a two-day party. Uh, in the past, in my younger days, I would do like a 30-day party. Like my birthday would last for 30 straight days. Not anymore. In fact, Friday and Saturday, I didn't really even get super drunk. I uh, I did get a little drunk on Friday, but I had somebody, a designated driver. On Saturday, I did not have a designated driver, so I didn't get that drunk. Also, that would have been a better day to get drunk because all I did was stay home the whole night. So that, so that should have been the day to get drunk. But anyways... Back to the story, my buddy Ward came by and uh, he calls me, he goes, I'm coming to your birthday party, I'm going on my way to work so I can't hang out. He says, but I got you a birthday present, you're gonna love it, it's something to do with Mario. And I said, you motherfucker. I put online, everyone who got invited, I told them don't get me anything Mario related. Do not get me a Mario hat, don't get me a Mario shirt, don't get me a Mario little game piece set. Don't give me Mario mug. Don't give me Mario socks, shirt, nothing. No Mario, nothing Mario related. Well, what about Luigi? Bitch, I'm gonna kill you if you get me a Luigi thing. So anyways, he pulls up. He said, I got something for you for Mario. I said, dude, what the fuck, man? I tell everyone not to give me Mario shit and they go and they get me this Mario shit and then he interrupts me and he pulls out three non-stick pans. Oven safe non-stick pans. And I said, there, be there better not be a Mario logo on this motherfucker. If I turn this pan upside down, there better not be a fucking Mario logo. Turn it upside down, there's nothing. He was lying. He was lying to me. It was one big prank. There was nothing Mario related he gave me. It's funny, he didn't even know. He didn't even know that I needed pans. 
For those of you who watch my Twitch stream, by the way, we stream Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. We stream all the time here on Twitch. We have a great time. He didn't even know that live on Twitch, I was looking for nonstick uh, oven safe pans. We were looking on Amazon, we were looking on Walmart, we were looking at these different websites. I wanted to find certain ones that had the glass top. I wanted to find one that had like a square edge. He didn't even know any of that. I said, bro, have you been watching my stream? Like, uh, have you been watching my stream? He goes, what's a stream? And I'm like, oh, pff, okay, okay, you have not been watching. Thanks for your support, dickhead. So anyways, he's, he's like, no, I didn't even know you were looking for pans. I said, well, how'd you know to get me pans? He said, uh, I went to your house and I looked at your current pans and you need new pans. And I said, uh, okay, I mean, I'm very observant of you. So <laughs> that's good. So one of my pants is going in the trash. The other pan I'm going to donate to uh, to Savers, which is like Salvation Army, uh, Goodwill, kind of thing like that. I'm going to donate my shit over there. And I have three pants. I have one that's like a six inch, almost as big as my dick. I have an eight inch, which is also almost as big as my dick. And I got a ten and a half inch, which is perfectly matches the size of my cock whenever I hold my dick up next to the frying pan, always with the, the temperature on low. That's how I get it warmed up. You never want to go too hot unless you have a dick mitt. So I got three new pans. That was great. Uh, Friday went perfect. I won some games of pool. I lost some games of pool. It was an all-around great day. And then fast forward to day two. I invite everybody over. I say, hey, everybody. Everyone who's here and everybody who I invited online on my little Facebook, I say, we're also partying tomorrow at my house. I'm going to make food. I'm going to make chicharrones. Fitnoid was there. I made guacamole. Then I made some carne asada and I got some tortillas. I got some salsa that I forgot to eat. I have a feast. Not only that, but it's UFC, like what, 299 or something? UFC is going on. That went great. Sean O'Malley was fighting. Not that I'm a Sean O'Malley fan, but the card was great. Sean O'Malley fight, eh, pretty entertaining, I guess. The card was fantastic. Skateboarders came over. My buddy Keith, uh, also known as Keith Likes to Party, he calls me on Saturday morning. He says, What are you doing? I said, I'm getting ready for the barbecue. He goes, Oh, uh, what do you mean barbecue? I said, it's my birthday. Aren't you not calling me in reference to the birthday thing? He goes, no, I just happen to be in town. I said, well, come over, skate the ramp. He goes, perfect. I have my skateboard. I said, well, what a fucking, what a like pleasant surprise that is that you have your skateboard and you're coming to a skateboarding barbecue. He shows up first, does some really cool tricks, accidentally does a switchback Smith. I wish that would have been on film. And, um, and then he randomly pulls out a tech deck. He's skating the ramp and he goes, man, I say tech decks are really popular, man. A bunch of nerds always have these tech decks. He goes, yeah, I know. And he pulls one out of his pocket, looks at the tech deck and goes, I lost my wheel. Oh man, dude, I'm so mad. This is my favorite tech deck. My lady bought me this tech deck. She's going to be so mad that I broke it. And I said, Hey, don't worry. I have uh, an extra wheel in my tiny little garage in my, in my tech garage. <laughs> And I said, fuck you, I'm, I'm, I'm making fun of you, you asshole. Who, who carries a tech deck around with them everywhere they go? Anyways, he came over, his chick skated, she did a kickflip somehow. Uh, he did Switchback Smith crazy, he did some other cool stuff. I got some skating done, Corey came over, did some skating. Mechanic Matt came over, did some skating. Uh, the food was great, I made chicharrones, never made them before in the air fryer. Let me tell you how I did it. I chopped them into perfect cubes because they came in strips. I chopped them into cubes. I put lemon on them, then I put a uh, slap your mother sauce, and slap, I, I, I slapped my mom, and then I got some salt, pepper, and garlic, uh, the slap, slap yo mama sauce, not sauce, bitch, it's a, it's a dry rub, it's salt, pepper, garlic, and some type of red pepper in there, I put that on there, boom, some cayenne, boom, tossed it all up, let it sit, 15 minutes or so for the flavors to penetrate. I don't fucking know, man. I throw it in there. I put it at 390 for 30 minutes and then and then flip it upside down to another 390 uh, the second time with the skin side up to crisp up. It gets these little bubbles on the skin. Gets nice and crunchy. I hand it out to all my friends. Got a little dry. It got a little bit dry. So next time I'm going to do it instead of 30 minutes and then 10 minutes, I'm going to do 25 minutes and then 10 minutes. I think that might be the way to do it. Uh, came out great, a little dry, but here's the thing. Fitnoid's guacamole came in clutch. You eat, listen, I said it before, I'll say it again. You eat the chicharron, you crunch it, you chew it for a little bit. You say, oh, this is great, you know. Could have been a little more seasoned, whatever. It was a little dry. That's pork, you know, it dries out easy, whatever. 
So uh, you say, well, this is like an eight out of 10. You know, it's like a big square of bacon, eight out of 10. You dip that bitch into the guac, 10 out of 10. Turns into a 10 out of 10. All, everything you're missing from like, from the dryness, you get that creamy mushiness of the guac, saltiness, boom. It was a match made in heaven. Then I throw on the uh, carne asada later in the day. I fucked that shit up too, man. It was not my best day for cooking. I overcooked it, not to the point where it's like uh, like charred on the edges, because I like it to be charred on the edges. But it was just dry. It was dry and hard. It was kind of like carne asada um, had you know, like like in the middle of carne asada and like beef jerky. It was just just too dry, and kind of chewy, kind of ruined it. So I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, damn, did I ruin the food? Like the chicharrones were pretty good, thanks to the guac. I ruined the other meat. Hope no one's bummed out. I turned my back. I turned my back again. It's all been eaten. Everyone ate every piece of it. Salsa is gone. Guacamole is gone. Chips are gone. So as far as the food, as far as me, like the the easiest way for me to enjoy my birthday is for me to see you guys enjoying enjoying what's happening. So they everyone's eating the food. Everyone's happy, chatting all night, uh, making jokes. Dude, we're all yelling at the TV. Absolute fantastic birthday party um some interesting things happened though once the drinking begins like you know the party's gonna go it's gonna go like uphill and then downhill and then uphill and then downhill so a couple of weird things that happened after the sun went down i mentioned gifts like it's my birthday you're gonna bring me a gift maybe you could bring a bag of chips bring some ice bring a case of beer. You don't need to bring a gift. Again, I said, if I if everyone's enjoying the party, then I am enjoying the the time, you know. My my gift is you guys showing up. And I a lot of people say that and they they make it seem like it's it's a bad thing. I'm dead serious. No sarcasm. My gift is everyone showing up. Everyone stopped what they were doing on a Saturday just to hang out with me. That makes me feel like special. And that's what I'm supposed to be feeling on my birthday. I'm supposed to be feeling special. Anyways, this guy, Matt, goes, hey, I got you a bunch of gifts. I say, I said no gifts. He goes, okay, don't worry about it. First gift, some cupcakes. I said, okay, I don't really eat cupcakes. Although, uh, for the next two days straight, I ate nothing but cupcakes. I said, okay, cupcakes, whatever. Eh, cool, I guess. Then he goes, and I have this. It's a flask. No one, I've never owned a flask. I've never had a flask. I don't even like drinking from flasks because I don't know how many mouths have been on that flask before my mouth went on it. Or you can waterfall the flask, but then you think that the, the alcohol is going to come out in a steady stream. It never does. Also, I don't uh, pretty much ever like drinking alcohol straight. So a uh, flask, interesting idea. Interesting gift. Second gift from him after the flask is a tiny bottle of Jägermeister. In the history of Ninja Lifestyle, since I've <clears throat> probably had, I probably had Jägermeister a couple times when I was like 17 years old. The span of age 17 to my current like mid to late 30s, um, no Jägermeister, never been seen with it, never taken a photo with it, never told everybody, hey, I like, I really like Jägermeister. So I get a liquor that I don't really like, okay? So from the same guy, Flask and Jäger, I go, that kind of goes together. And he goes, I got one more. I got one more gift for you. I say, what? I don't need any more gifts. He goes, well, you like tools, don't you? And I go, oh shit, maybe a, Maybe he'll have a nice crescent wrench for me or, uh, or something or some, or some vice grips, you know, something that everyone uses all the time. He pulls out a Dremel set, uh, a wired Dremel set, and I look at it. I go, I already have a Dremel, but that's nice. I, mean, I can use this for something, especially the attachments, all the little pieces. Like that'll, that'll certainly come in handy. I look a little bit closer at it, and I can see that some items have been stolen out of the Dremel set. <laughs> like a piece has been cut open and they took some of the, some of the like pieces that would go onto it, and I'm looking close at it. I'm like, "Did you steal this shit? <laughs> Wait a minute! Did you steal all of this? Bro went to the store, stole cupcakes, stole Jaeger, stole a flask, and then stole a Dremel set, or got it from like an open box store. Because why? Why are you gifting me something that's already been stolen from? So that was fun." And then, you know what? It really is the story of Matt, okay? I don't see him that often, but the story gets more and more fun. So part two is he goes, hey, uh, you know, I got you all these gifts. Uh, we're having a great time. 
Got your Jaeger. He also bought me four 211s. I got to drink none of them. So he basically bought two 11s for himself and, and a couple friends. I don't know why they were, they were presented as a gift to me. I didn't get to drink any of them. Uh, so he had the four two 11s. And then he goes, hey, is it okay if my girlfriend comes? Uh, comes over and I'm like, uh, I guess, you know, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm kind of like, okay, I know everyone here. Now we're going to invite people I've never seen before. I don't really like that idea, but you are the only one that gave me a stolen Dremel. So sure, invite your girlfriend. So I go into my bathroom and I can kind of see out the window. Maybe 15 minutes later, I look out my window and I see someone pull up on a BMX bike that I've never seen before. And it had pegs. And that's... And when it comes to BMX bikes and people not doing tail whips, pegs means drugs. <laughs> so the chick pulls up. Uh, she comes in there. Uh, they look at each other like, this is my girlfriend. She goes, hey, I used to be homeless. And I'm like, oh, God, that was your opener? That was, hey, hey, nice to meet everyone. Happy birthday. I used to be homeless. I'm like, oh, what the fuck is up with this bitch? Who'd you invite to my house, man? I, I told him. I told everybody, like, oh, man, get, get your phones. Don't, I know everyone's phone is, like, laying out. Grab your phone. Grab your phones, everyone. Get the damn phone. Put it in your fucking pocket. Uh, I look around. I'm like, okay, where's my where's my Bluetooth speaker? Uh, where's all, where's my shit, dude? I'm looking around. I'm like, okay, my keep, keep an eye on my phone chargers. Anyways, she sits down on this side of the room. Matt sits down on this side of the room. They don't fucking speak to each other at all. <laughs> they don't say a single word to each other. <laughs> He's, he's just watching fights. She's watching fights. No one's speaking to each other. I'm like, what the fuck? Why'd you invite this bitch over here? What is going on here, man? <laughs> Eventually, uh, nobody... <laughs> I don't know. She uh, she was nice. Okay, she was nice. Just didn't really fit like the, the vibe of the group. And I don't mean that. I'm not trying to make fun of someone <laughs> Who rides a bike and was homeless or whatever. Just, it's my birthday. No, you can't show up to my birthday if no one knows who you are. You Only one person in the whole building knows who you are. Anyway, she left early. And then <laughs> the story keeps going. And then this guy, Matt. Matt, soaking wet, it's 150 pounds. He goes, you know, I could bench press 300 pounds. I said, no, you can't. He goes, I can. I said, you cannot in a million fucking years bench press 300 pounds. He goes, you don't know. I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt. You can't even see my arms. I said, first off, dumbass, it's like a chest movement more so than an arm movement. So, so now, I, now I'm positive you can't lift this weight. I said, bro, if you lift 200 pounds, I'll give you 10 bucks. And then Tex, Tex stands up. He goes, yeah, I got 10 on it. So I'm like, if you can do two thirds of what you said you could do. Uh, you'll get twenty dollars. We can go out there right now. I got a bench press. You know, like what are the odds? I have a bench press ten feet away. We go over there. I say you should probably warm up. I put on one thirty-five. I do fucking five reps. Tex does ten reps. Matt gets under there. The guy that just told me he could bench press uh, three hundred pounds. He can't get one thirty-five off the rack. <laughs> he, can't, he can't. He can't get it off the rack. I'm like, I, I'm like, it's funny to laugh about now. Like I'm dying laughing now, but at the time I'm just like, oh, that's cool, man. Like maybe, maybe you're not warmed up. <laughs> you know? I'm like, I'm like, Hey bro, maybe, maybe you're not warmed up. I don't know. Maybe you need some chalk or something. Maybe, maybe it's the alcohol. Like, I don't know. It's weird, man. You, you thought you could bench press 300 pounds. 135 was, is unfathomable. Maybe it's, uh, Maybe it's a, the weather or something. I, I don't know. That's weird. Like maybe last time you could do it, but this time you can't. And uh, not to be rude, but also, <laughs> also whenever someone tries to talk to me about, about weightlifting and then they come in, they go, what's the bar weigh? Like 10? I go, this is an Olympic barbell. <laughs> no, it, it's <laughs> most, like most of them are always going to be 45. Maybe you could get a 35 or 55, but 10 is... If it was 10 pounds, it'd break. Anyways, um, <laughs> I, I don't want to feel like I'm make, making fun of him because all these little funny things that happened, um, all these funny things that happened made my party that much more fun. And also, the next day, I found a little piece of metal in my, uh, in my kitchen. I'm cleaning everything up. I find a little piece of metal. I said, what is this? I look at it. It's hollow. It unscrews. I look into it. 
there's like a triangle on one side and the other side has like little holes in it so it looks like a little pepper shaker you scroll i'm like could this be like for weed this is like a weed grinder i've never seen this item before so i take the item uh i show fit i say what the fuck is this she goes i don't know what that is i'm like it's a wine thing i bet i bet you put it in a wine bottle and it keeps the wine from i don't know going bad or something it's it's, it's shaped like a cork what is this so i put it on my discord and somebody says oh that's uh that's for a whipped cream machine i said oh whippets i did hear some murmurs i did hear some murmuring last night about people doing whippets in my house they left their damn whippet paraphernalia on the damn in my like dishes area god damn it these guys, i you know who i think it was pegs i bet pegs came in there huffing the whippets god damn it <laughs> i don't know who it was somebody was doing whippets in my house without my my knowledge which i guess is if you had to do a harmful drug i'd rather you do whippets than fucking heroin in my house uh actually you're not allowed in my house if you possess heroin let's 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 start there whippets ah maybe anyways yeah they left they left their little paraphernalia there um so that's just just adds to the fun story dude i've been ranting about my birthday for 22 minutes and it was it was great it was all around great got to see my friends um had a great time uh we haven't looked at the news in a while i wanted to run a news article by you guys just because I thought it was funny. The headline reads, nearly 100 students have been hit in Clark County school zones so far this year. So it's March. It's March and in the school zones, when kids get off of school, when they get out of school and they try to cross the street, nearly 100 of them have been hit by a car. Now, for me, this says more about the students than it does about the drivers. I can understand if it was like first grade and second grade, but I'm sure a lot of these students are in, you know, ninth, 10th, 11th grade getting hit by cars. Here's my thing. I've been to these school zones. Have you seen how children cross the street? They... I think it came from like Dragon Ball Z or something. I think that kids still believe that force fields are a real thing. They run out with their eyes closed backwards, cartwheeling across the street. Not, not the, back in my day, it was look left, look right, look left again, because you can't trust yourself, and then go. Nowadays, the kids are, are cartwheeling on their phones. They're crossing the street diagonal. They're, they're going around the cars, under the cars, laying down in the street for TikTok, just... Uh, just throwing shit, papers flying everywhere. And if, when they get hit, I would say that you get hit by a car once in sixth grade, you're not going to get hit by a car again. You're going to learn your lesson. Like, do the kids deserve to like, die and get smashed? No, probably not. But a lot of the times here in Las Vegas, when you have a school zone, you have a volunteer crossing guard. You usually have two. They have big red wands and they've constructed. They have done everything in their power to keep these stupid ass kids safe. Because listen, when you just put up a crosswalk and some signs, you say, okay, well, maybe if a kid got hit, maybe it's not their fault, maybe it's the driver's fault. Okay, now let's hire two crossing guards. Oh, uh, okay, and then a kid gets hit. Okay, like maybe the crossing guard should have waved better or something, maybe the kid shouldn't have walked out there. Okay, fine, let's, uh, let's add bright, giant, tall uh poles with flashing yellow lights with sounds and noises and let's put glowing sticks in the crossing guards hands let's give the crossing guards cones and and loudspeakers and then now now maybe now maybe the kids will somehow be able to avoid getting hit by the cars no they're still getting hit uh at a rate of well, let's guess 50 per no 30 33 per month I guess if I if I do the math in my head, 33 kids per month. If here's my thing. I I have never in my life I've crossed a billion streets. I didn't get a car until I was 18 and I was I was doing shit. I was out and about every day. I was either riding my BMX bike, <laughs> no pegs, or I was skateboarding everywhere or or both, or I was or I was riding my bike with a skateboard strapped to my back. I crossed a million streets never once in my entire life 
that I ever even come close to being hit by a car. You wanna know why? Because I went back to my training. I went back to boot camp way back in, uh, what, 1980, 1990. Well, like, uh, back, back in, in the single digit years, I went back to my, to my training. I said, look left, look right, look left. Now cross the street without getting hit by a car. And it's, it's never failed me. It's never failed me. And I don't want to be that guy that goes, okay, old man. Well, back in my day, the streets were different. First off, the, you you put kids, the kids are getting dumber. Every year they get dumber and dumber and dumber. The, this state is 49th out of 50 in education. And listen, if the kids can't do math, there's no way they're going to be able to cross the street. Okay? I cannot believe, flash, motherfucker. I'll take a picture of it. Flashing lights on both sides. They're... There are, there are more flashing lights at every single elementary school and middle school here than the amount of lights in front of every single fire station. Because you know when there's a fire, a light goes off, and the fire truck has to pull out onto the main road. There, there are more lights. So that's two lights, right? Two flashing lights. A fire truck is coming out. A fire truck is coming out. Two flashing lights. The school zones, it's got to be one, two, three, four. It's like eight flashing lights, and then you have the wands, the glowing wands. Here's my thing. The cars are going slow. I don't think that I don't think these kids are getting hit by cars just, just blowing through because they can't. There's cops. Cops wait at these things. They catch people all the time. They will catch you if the speed limit says 15 and they get you at 16. You're paying for that fucking ticket. They they show no mercy on school zones. If I get hit by a 15 mile per hour car and just hang it up, just hang it up and. This is why, because those people, they go on to do great things. They go on to fuck up your Taco Bell order. This is why when you order a chicken quesadilla, you get half of a steak quesadilla folded the wrong way. This is why when you get, I want a spicy McChicken. Uh, this is why the mayonnaise comes on top of the bun. That's why. The kids can't even figure out how to get from point A to point B. Literally, when point A is this side of the street and that side of the street, the crosswalk, they repaint the crosswalks. They think, they think that that it's gonna help. Also, the kids, I don't know what, what they believe. I don't know what, they see this giant 3,000 pound hunk of metal and go, ah, come here, man, it's not gonna hurt me. I'm gonna cartwheel while I, while I look at TikTok. No, motherfucker, you deserve to get hit. I, I don't even have to read the article. I've seen, I've seen the kids. I, next time, if I can, if there's no police around, next time, I will pull out my phone, I will show you guys. If I go to the corner where there's a middle school, it goes, uh, or it's like, it's like a middle, what is middle school? It's like eighth, it's like seventh, eighth, and ninth grade, something like that. Right there, there's a, there's a big middle school over there, public school. If I go there, when school gets out, and I just sit at the, um, at the intersection, and I pull out my phone, I'll do a live stream. I will do a live stream there, and you will see exactly why the kids are getting hit. And it's not for lack, it's not for lack of lights. Like what, they're gonna start throwing glitter and shit? Throwing glitter at cars? You're like, bro, if you, you could stop all traffic, all traffic. And you know what it'd be? Kids would be getting hit by bikes or they'd be bumping into each other like a bunch of pinballs because they're so dumb. I have no sympathy for the hundred. I have no sympathy for the nearly 100 students who have been hit. No sympathy because you know what? That's a hundred students that now have learned a lesson that maybe they will be able to keep in their brain. They will be able to remember this lesson. Math? Nah, I don't know about that. Spelling? Nah. History? Nah. Science? Nah, I don't, uh, I didn't study. How to not get hit by a car? Oh, I, I know, I remember that one. I won't make that mistake again. That, that's, that's the point. Um, we're not even gonna read the article. Oh, you know, fuck, we'll read a little bit. District traffic officers will be putting in overtime to keep students safe. There is not, there is no amount. You could dig a tunnel under the street and have them go under the street and the kids would still find a way to get hit by a car because they're that dumb. Like, you can't, you could, you could get a personal bodyguard for each one of these fucking students and it still wouldn't help. They would still find a way to get hit by cars. They're that dumb. Anyways, I, uh, I don't think it's just like, oh, they're looking at their phones. They're not paying attention. They're literally getting dumber. I, I, I be getting grocery. I, okay, I forgot to tell you guys this. I was at Walmart the other day, uh, just getting regular groceries. And three, like, teenagers got kicked out of Walmart from the, uh, Walmart here hires, like, external security. 
they, they have their own cars and shit too. They patrol from Walmart to Walmart and they don't really do anything except for uh, bother me when I'm trying to park. I had one of these guys, I went, I went down. So the Walmart, Super Walmart, the rows are kind of like diagonal for the cars. I went down the wrong aisle and this fucking, this bitch ass Walmart fucking security guard fucking turns his car and blocks mine in and says, this is a one way, this is like a one way lane. It's a one way lane. This, 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 actually, actually, sir, this is a Walmart. Actually, this, he says, you need, you need to turn around and go back. I said, it's a one way lane. I can't fucking turn around. It's, it's too thin. You want me to pay, you want me to stop my car back into a parking spot and then drive the other, what the fuck? A weird abuse of power. Anyways, my point was they're douchebags. So I'm I'm walking down Walmart and these three kids are getting kicked out. And I don't know what they did to get kicked out, but the se the security guard has lost his fucking mind. He goes, "What the fuck, you dumbass kids even want to be in a Walmart for? Everybody get out of here, you motherfucker! When I was a kid, you think I want to hang out in Walmart? You guys are losers. Get the fuck out of here. Every one of you has to leave. You, you, and you. You're not buying something. Leave. But I laughed so hard when he said, he said. When I was a kid, I didn't even want to be in a Walmart. <laughs> and he was serious. He was just like, he's like, what are y'all even doing here? You're here just messing around, running around. Uh, but what Keith said, I never thought of it like this. Keith in the chat says, what are the kids going to do? The malls are gone. That's funny because I do remember... Um, Shortly after I started skating and I was able to get to the mall, by the way, the mall's like four miles away. I would just ride my skateboard to the fucking mall just to do nothing, just to walk up the mall, down the mall, walk up the mall, skate a three stair outside the mall and then go home four miles back. Hopefully I was, somebody was able to call their parents and get a ride because by that time you're exhausted. You know, you got to skate all the way back. But Keith is right. I wouldn't say like we do have a mall here still that it's functional, but it's not as fun to go in there and wander around if you're a kid. Also, kind of dangerous. The malls have gotten, the malls have become the new like outdoor swap meet. Like the mall's kind of dangerous. Uh, I remember one day I tried to go into a, our mall has a thing called round one. Round one is like a Dave and Busters. So it has a million arcade games. You can win little prizes. In fact, I won my tripod. I had enough tickets, so I bought a tripod with tickets, and they have a bar, and they serve, like, food, like pizza and hot dogs and shit. So I went in there one day, I was like, hey, uh, they go, we're closed. I said, like, bro, it's like 9 p.m. You're not closed. He goes, no, we're closed. It's, it's special. I said, bro, the door says you're open until 2 a.m. He goes, listen, I'm not supposed to tell you, there was a shooting a few minutes ago, so we're closed. I was like, oh, okay. There was a shooting in the mall, and now the round one is connected to the mall, and now the fucking round one is shut down. Um, I guess where that wandering story, what I meant to say there is that uh, the mall, the mall's not as safe as a Walmart. Then again, never thought I would, s you know what, I don't know if I agree, maybe not. The mall and Walmart, maybe equal safety, equal amount of safety, an equal amount of blueberries. So, uh... So whatever, um, the kids deserve to get hit by cars and uh, they, they, they need to find a better place to hang out. I, I don't know, we, we, I really started rambling on that one. These podcasts, you guys think everything's planned. I freestyle the entire thing. Um, what do I have planned for this week and next week? Well, I'm digging a lot of holes. I'm digging holes all around my house in this nasty, hard ass Las Vegas dirt. The dirt is tough here. There's no such thing as like soil. There's no trees. All we have is cactuses and tumbleweeds. So the dirt is just hard and nasty. Never any rain. So I'm going down there. I'm trying to get digging in this dirt. I need to convert this uh, copper water line to PEX. And also shout out to my Twitch stream. I don't remember who first came up with the idea, but they said, if you want to convert copper to PVC, why not convert to PEX? It'd be easier to work with. I say, well, I probably can't afford it. I looked it up. The whole conversion's like $50. Oh, it's going to be great. It's flexible. It can't freeze. It's uh, it's good under like heat. It's good under pressure. I'm going to run that. But to do that, I have to dig down to this copper uh, this copper line. Also, uh, my grandpa didn't tell me. It's funny. You know, he didn't, I always say I'm going to do these little home improvement things. And he waits. He waits for me to fuck up and goes, oh, yeah. 
My grandpa didn't tell me that he built an entire like crossword puzzle underground with multiple different pipes going God knows where because the entire backyard, side of the house, and front yard used to have grass, which used to have sprinklers, which used to have PVC underground, which is going, by the way, there's no rhyme or reason to the direction of any pipe. I got pipes going up, down, left, right, and a dam, this way, that way, Tetris configuration going every direction, and everywhere I dig, I find a PVC pipe, and I don't know if there's water in it, I don't know if it's been capped, I don't know if there's a, if there's a, uh, a gauge or whatever, what do you call the, uh, a valve, I don't know if there's a valve over there, I don't know where the fuck it's going, every motherfucking direction, this way, that way, up, down, I, I, I saw one, it did a, it did a Chinese finger trap, this motherfucker had PVC pipe doing a Chinese fig, it was intertwined with each other like a braided, like, like a braided fucking necklace, or braided fucking, you know, the little the survival bracelet. I said, what the goddamn fuck is going on here? I sent him a picture. He goes, oh, uh, yeah, nah, I, th I think I remember that. <laughs> I go, what the fuck, goddamn it. I gotta go, I gotta dig around this shit to try and, listen. If I break this copper pipe, it doesn't matter. The copper pipe doesn't matter. No one cares about that. But here's the thing. There, there is a swirl of PVC all around the copper pipe. I don't know which one is live. What, like, I don't know where it goes. It just go. It goes off into the into the into the wilderness. I have no idea. So he's gonna come by after the podcast. Don't do not send him any of this. He's gonna come by after the podcast. I'm gonna discuss what's going on. Maybe he'll come back to him once he sees what I've dug up so far. So best case scenario, I can break. I can break through all this PVC because I would imagine. I would imagine there can't be water in all. I, there can't be. Uh, I, 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 one of them would have blew up by now. One of them would have blew up right now. Can you imagine if I get a leak directly under my mini ramp, which is very possible? Hopefully, there's a, uh, I keep saying gauge. There's a valve. Hopefully, there's a valve somewhere. Um, and we can, hopefully, we can find the hidden, the legend of the hidden valves under the house. Um, and we can cap those off. Uh, he's coming over to, I guess, like, refresh his memory. I'm like, dude, I'm, I, I, I told him to come over. I'm like, dude, there's too much. I don't know what any of these do. Where they go, why they're here, where do they connect to, wh which valve goes to which. I got all the valves dug up, but there's a goddamn, it's, it's one of those, you know, the, what are those things called where you have to draw the line and, and find the maze and draw the line through the maze and they sell them next to the crossword puzzles and shit? It's like that. I got to follow each pipe, but guess what? You would think that if a pipe turns right, then, then five feet from there, you, you would, st there would still be a pipe. No. Oh God, no. Oh no. Why would a pipe turn right when it can go right, down, up, down, left, right, up, left? Why would they do it like that? I don't know. So anyways, um, that's going on. Also, I found a T-bone. I dug, I dug, let's say, what, nine, ten inches down, I find a T-bone. Like, an actual T-bone from a stake. Or, or a human. By the way, there's two dogs buried under this house. There's one buried right there, and there's one buried over there. And I, I know exactly where that one's buried. I know exactly where it is. The one over there, I, I don't know. It could be five feet over here. It could be five feet over here. It could be five feet over here. I don't know where it is. So hopefully I don't end up digging one day and I dig up a bunch of dead dog bones. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, I got that going on. Whatever. Uh, what else is happening? Oh, my ramp. I wanted to show you guys. And for some of you watching this on, uh, on Podbean without video, you might not be able to see, but I'll try to explain it to you. There's a part of my mini ramp the, that looks like a kicker ramp. Okay, you have your mini ramp, you know, it looks like kind of a U shape. And I have one portion of it that looks like a kicker ramp. And the issue is that kicker ramp, everyone thinks it's there to jump off of. It's not. It's simply there to turn around, but to also give more space in the backyard. So some people are like, oh, it should go all the way back. And no, it can't go all the way back because I want this to be more room for the dog. The dog has all this room. We shaved off what, like 20 by 5? Over 100 square feet of extra space now for the dog to hang out, for me to put tar uh, to, like AstroTurf or something down. I can do anything over here. I now have all this room, and also when people stand on this side, they see over the wall, and my neighbors probably think that my friends are weird. So for, uh, for additions to the mini ramp, I'm, I put coping up here already, uh, an angle iron that I stole from a bed frame, and I want to put another one here, but I'm having some issues so as far as the mini ramp being quote done, I keep saying it's done. I, uh, I still want to add, I got to figure out a way to get the angle iron here because this is not level. 
So I, I'm thinking right now I'm going to be do, do two pieces of angle iron. Also, I apologize if you're listening to this and not watching it. I'll try, I'm trying to be like as visually descriptive as possible. The top portion of the kicker ramp, imagine if you were to go do a rock to fakie on the top of a kicker, a lot of times your kingpin will rip up whatever's there if it's wood. So having coping there, your kingpin will now slide over the wood and it won't rip the ramp up. And I glued it so that when it does become, uh, when it does become really like broken, it'll just simply fall off. Versus if I screwed it in, it's gonna rip the wood off with it. So I think that's a great idea. I wanna maybe put some on the side because when you accidentally come off of a grind, uh, you might accidentally grind up the side of it. And if you're grinding up the side of masonite for too long, eventually it's gonna wear down and then you're gonna hit the plywood and then you're gonna have a big problem. If your trucks hit that plywood, we're gonna have like some structural problems. So that's, that's what's going on with the ramp. Uh, it's never done. I've also treated the sides and the top and some of the insides, pretty much almost everything that's exposed, I've treated for uh, like water treatment, which changed the color of everything. I still have to do the, the masonite, which will turn darker. That could be fun. I also, uh, I think the purpose of that, initially I was like, who cares? You know, water just rolls right off this. But the older it gets and the tiny cracks, I think it will suck in the water. And that's probably what will cause it to start to warp. So I still have to paint. I have to paint the masonite, the top layer, with more of that water treatment. Uh, sealant, I couldn't think of that word, like water sealer. And then, um, ah, whatever. And then we'll have a ramp. I keep coming up with new ideas. So far, everything's great. Uh, I do notice that some areas, if you, if you stomp on this area right here, like the, side, the ramp kind of like jumps a little bit. But maybe that's something that uh, will just work its way in. Uh, what else do I got going on here? I had a trivia question, but I lost it. Okay, I will uh, I will accept either answer here because I googled I googled my trivia question and it's changed. It's changed the answer depending on how I type the question. Okay, first one to answer this question correctly wins a Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack. The question is, on average, how many tornadoes are reported in the United States on average? I will accept two different answers. Although, if we average those two answers and you come up with an answer in the middle, wouldn't that kind of also be right? How many tornadoes? iBookBoy says four. Node for Joy says three. I mean, per year. How many tornadoes are there per year in a year? Did I not say that? You, guys, you think there's fucking four per year? Uh, the winner will get a Ninja Lifestyle sticker pack. Low Key says 1,000. Keith says 1,000. Day Day says 1,200. Barry says 1,200. I, I also got both the answer, 1,000 and 1,200. Can somebody ask the uh, the robot? Anyways, low key, you are the champion. Send me your address after the podcast in a DM, and I will get these stickers to you. Also, if anyone has one trivia and you have not gotten your sticker pack, uh, reach out again because here's what happens. On Friday, I write down the name of the winner, and then uh, I get a DM, and the DMs come from every direction. Sometimes it's on Twitch, sometimes Discord, sometimes Twitter, sometimes uh, Instagram. You know, I get them from sometimes Facebook, and I say, I don't know. I get it from one direction, the other direction. I, I don't check all the time. I don't check all my DMs all the time. Or I do check them, but I check it after the podcast when I'm sitting in the bar booth drinking a beer, and I go, oh, I should remember that. And then, you know, two weeks goes by, and this guy goes, where's my sticker pack? You're, you're fucking ripoff. And I go, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a ripoff, dog. I just forgot. So n all you guys, you're never bothering me. Feel free to reach out. Always, uh, always collect what's owed to you. Always collect what is owed to you guys when it comes to sticker packs. Anyways, that's all I have. That's all I have for the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are having a great weekend. Can I get a hell yeah from everybody who tuned in uh, late or is still here in the chat? I want to shout everyone out. If you tuned in late, don't worry. A copy of this podcast, a repeat, a rerun comes out on Sunday, Sunday, just in time for the new work week that, uh, that comes out on Podbean, iTunes, on Spotify, a lot of different things. I guess there have been maybe a couple problems on Spotify. I don't know how to fix those. If you're having Spotify problems, go to YouTube or go to po podcast app or go to Podbean or go to whatever, whatever they got out there. My shit is supposed to go out into the podcast world. I don't know how it works. I signed up for all this shit one day, many years, five years ago I signed up and now I don't know what happens. It just magically, it magically appears. Shout out to Node for Droid, Guy just OG Cybermaniac, Cam702, Node for Droid, Barry McCockiner, Evil One, Late Bloomer, Loki, Keith, iBookBoy, Love My Toe, Late Bloomer, Day Day, Cam, and The Real, 
Griff, I appreciate you guys hanging out. Shout out to iBookBoy for resubscribing today. He has subscribed for 36 months. Also, a special shout out to Catch, who is not here, but he donated $200 this week. Very generous. An awesome birthday gift. If you guys want to do something nice for me for my birthday, you can always donate. You can also tip. Give me a tip like a bartender. A $1 tip is fine. $2 tip is better. $200 is the absolute greatest. If you don't have any money, that's fine too. Because I don't have any money just like you. You know what I do? I support the podcasts that I like. I support the channels that I like. I, uh, I supported Gonzo this weekend. I went to see Kung Fu Panda 4. He's one of the animators. And I even saw his name in the credits. So support your friends. Support your podcasts. Tell a friend about the podcast. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys have a great week. I'm going to go in the backyard and dig some holes. And then I'm going to go to Savers today and pick up a table to break on Monday And uh, after that, I'm going to start drinking. So as I always say to you guys, don't drink too much, but don't drink too little. I don't even know why you kids are in Walmart. When I was a kid, I would never be in Walmart. Get out of Walmart, hurry up and go hit, get hit by a car or something. <laughs> you should be out there getting hit by a car. <laughs>